Welcome to BeatSource Basics. My name is Mojax and today we continue the series where I break down the basics on BeatSource itself and in particular the various integrations we have with all the different DJ software and hardware platforms. In the first episode I talked about Serato DJ Pro and Serato DJ Lite. So if you are a Serato user and you haven't seen that one yet make sure you go and check that one out. I will link it in the description and up above. This time though, we're talking about Record Box from Pioneer DJ. One thing I want to note before we begin is that all of the functionality that I talk about in the video does relate to both the regular BeatSource streaming plan and the Pro Plus plan as well, aside from of course the offline locker which is only available with the Pro Plus plan. Let's get to it. Before we begin, in case you're new to BeatSource itself, I'm just going to take you through the process of adding a playlist to your library. That's what we're going to use for this demonstration here. So we have various ways of doing it. I'm here on the BeatSource.com site and I'm going to go through and add one of these playlists to my library. We have the playlist tab at the top, genres and various ways of working with it. We can add tracks individually. We can create a playlist from a track, but I'm just going to add a pre-made playlist into my own library. As you can see, I could just click on save to library right here, but I'm going to click through to show you what's in here. So this is the top 20 classics and throwbacks, June 2023. There are 19 tracks in there. So we could again add tracks individually to a playlist or create one or add them to an existing playlist. But I'm just going to save this whole playlist to my library right now. So I'm going to click that button. There we are, 19 tracks successfully added, comes up in the green bar. We are good to go. If I go into my playlist tab now, then I can see that's in there, all present and correct. And we can do things like move tracks around and reorder the playlist, etc. But if we hit the edit playlist button, we have lots of options. But for now, I'm happy with that. We are ready to go into Record Box itself. Now we're in the software, there are two very important things that you need to be aware of before we start. Firstly, at the time of making this video, Record Box will need to be in performance mode in order to access beats or streaming. In recent weeks, Pioneer DJ have added support for beat port streaming in export mode, so you can manage your tracks for streaming direct play on CDJ 3000s, but that facility is not available for BeatSource yet. I will update this guide later on if or when that happens. So to use BeatSource, you'll need to ensure you're switched into performance mode, which is done with the button at the top left of the screen, and if BeatSource isn't showing up in the tree on the left, you'll have to go into Settings and tick it in the View Settings window. The second important point is that you don't actually need a subscription plan for Recordbox itself to use BeatSource streaming. If you're new to the software, then you can go to recordbox.com and check out the Compatible DJ Units page. That tells you which hardware requires which level of Recordbox plan. For example, if you're using a DDJ Flex 6 GT, that works with the free plan, so you'll only need a free record box account to use BeatSource streaming with that hardware. Other gear does require the creative or professional plans to use with the software, but that is hardware dependent. And if you currently use your gear without a paid record box subscription already, that won't change because you also want to use BeatSource streaming. There definitely are some benefits to having a creative or professional record box plan when used in conjunction with BeatSource, but I'll talk about those later on. So now I'm in record box, I've made sure I'm in performance mode in the top left and I've gone into the settings and I've made sure that beat source is visible over here on the tree on the left hand side. Normally you'll click the login button or the first time you log in you'll look, click that button, it will take you out to your browser, you'll put in your username and your password and then it will bring you back into the software. In my case I'm just going to refresh my beat source library because I've already logged in here. And you can see right now in this record box collection, we only have four tracks, four local MP3s. There's a reason I've got some local tracks in there. We'll show you that in a minute. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is that I don't have any kind of plan set up on here. So I do have a creative plan that I'm subscribed to through record box. But in this case, I don't have it activated on this computer. I just have the free plan I'm basically just logged in with no extra cost there so the only subscription I've got is my beat source subscription that I have active right here so let's expand out on that tree we can see we have various options we have search tracks so we can go in and search for anything on the entire beat source catalog so I'm just going to search for Drake and it will bring up 100 results if there's that many then it will bring up 100 to begin with and then as you scroll down 
it will bring up some more. So we'll go down, there you go. We'll continue to load them until they're all eventually loaded. Now, one thing I will point out straight away here, right? This is very important because uh, if you're coming from another platform, especially a lot of platforms will handle this differently. So the track title and the mix name will actually be the same field. They combine those together. Record box does not do that. So if you don't have the mix name field enabled, then you will just see, let me show you for an example. So I'll go into, I'm right clicking on the top bar, hide the mix name. You can see now Drake started from the bottom. We have all these different versions and we've got no idea what those are. So we need the mix name field. So again, you click on the these fields at the top, right click, mix name. And then we can see we have all the different versions and we can see which is which because obviously that's very important if you want the intro version a clean version or a you know, dirty version so always make sure in record box you have that mix name field enabled now as you can see the bpm and the key is coming in from beat source this is when you're working in this tab over on the left hand side when you're working in this kind of beat source area this is just pulling information from beat source and it's important to be aware that unlike, again, some other platforms, it's not talking back. So, for example, if I was to go into, we've got other ones we'll look at in a sec, but I'll just go into the playlist I've just added. All right, in this playlist, if I decided I didn't want this Daft Punk record in that playlist, there's no way from this tab, from the Beat Source section, to actually remove that. I can right-click on it. There's no option to remove it from the playlist. I can't rearrange things. I can't drag tracks into another playlist, for example. It doesn't talk back to Beat Source in that way. That is offset by something it does, which I will show you momentarily. But in the meantime, let's just go over back over here. We have the top tracks in all the different genres that are available on Beat Source, or our selected genres. You know, we have more than this, but that's the ones that are selected. So Latin, for example. So if you're playing a gig and you're not quite familiar with a certain style of music, you really want the absolute top bangers. This is based on what DJs are actually playing. And then we have below that the Beat Source playlist, which is the curated playlist in each genre. So let's go into Latin, for example, expand that out. And we can have Club Primetime Latin. And these are all curated by our team. So again, you know they're going to be bangers. But this is great if you're just jamming around at home, you want to find some new music for your sets, then this is a fantastic tool for discoverability. Absolutely. And we have those for all the different genres, multiple playlists for each. And yes, below that is my playlist. And as you can see, I'm a pretty heavy beat source user so i have a lot of my own playlists already saved in the service now so let's go back to this crate here my playlist this is the one i've added now at this point we have various ways that we can do things so firstly let me show you how you would just work with a track out of nowhere so i'm going to pull in daft punk you know load it to a deck and very quickly so like as soon as it's cached the track then it will actually start playing you don't need the analysis to be done before you can start playing it you can start playing it straight away but as you can see here the analysis is now done and i can see this beat grid is looking pretty good pretty happy with that at this point the full track is cached to the computer so if the internet connection was to cut out for any reason the track is going to play right through to the end so that's quite reassuring always good to know but yeah that's there and i can go back and i can set a hot cue at the beginning i can jump around and set memory points hot cues hot loops whatever i want to do i can adjust that beat grid if it's incorrect i can set it and there's another knob here which you'll notice is the auto gain knob and this is basically common to all of the integrations i've used so far when you first load a track it does the analysis of the auto gain but it doesn't apply it so i would need to load this track a second time for that auto gain and now you can see the auto gain has been adjusted over on the left hand side so just bear that in mind. It might not be an issue for you. You know, you might just ride the trims manually or whatever. But for me, I like to just load it once, let it do the analysis, then load it again. But yeah, I said you can't talk back to Beat Source from here. But what's happened, and this happens whenever you load a track from any of these playlists over here or from the search window, what has now happened is that this track has been added to my main record box collection. And that's where stuff starts to get very powerful within record box so let's now go up we're going to come out of the beat source section of the tree we're going to go up to the collection and you can now see 
we now have this track in my record box collection alongside these mp3s what does that allow us to do well firstly now when you're down in the beat source area you can't do anything with metadata you can't change any information in the track once it's in my collection this metadata not the track itself but the metadata now lives in my collection so i can do what i want with it so i can go into the info window and i can put a star rating on it i can add comments i can even change the title like so so all of this now metadata this metadata effectively belongs to you it's coming from beat source originally but now you can do whatever you want with it and this is something that some other integrations you just can't do like serato dj pro for example let me make a playlist so i'm going to right click on playlist create new playlist and we'll call this one testing and at this point now either by right clicking and add to playlist or just by dragging i can take these mp3s that are living locally on my computer and that beat source track and i can add them to the same playlist and i can then sort that playlist by whatever field i want i can change the metadata the tag information i can right click and renumber track order so that's where it is a level above some other integrations absolutely now when it comes to adding stuff into the library yeah you don't have to do it track you know by loading a track to a deck you can also either just select a few tracks right click and then import to collection or i can right click on this whole playlist and import playlist and at that point it will add that entire playlist to my main record box collection it will start analyzing the tracks and again now i can rename this i don't like the name of it i can change the name i can reorder it i can order it by key and you'll notice as well when tracks come in from beat source they are coming in with the traditional key notation but because in the settings in record box i have it set to alphanumeric so again that's done in view you go down towards the bottom and you can see classical alphanumeric i have alphanumeric i like the camelot codes again now as these are analyzing they're all showing up with the camelot codes so as you can see this is super powerful because it is frustrating to me that some other integrations don't offer that ability to mix local and beat source music in the same playlist or the same crates and in fact even if i was to log into beat port as well at this point i could mix up beat port beat source and local tracks all in the same playlist so for me that is a wonderful wonderful feature now there's one other thing i want to talk about of course of the, the offline locker we have to mention because this is working great when i've got an internet connection but if you know you're going to a gig where there is no internet connection or you might have a spotty connection then of course you can add things to the offline locker that lives at the bottom of the beat source section in the tree so let me scroll down there offline locker i've actually got two tracks in there right now but let's add some more so to do that we can actually add them from within the beat source area now when you add them from here so if i add this version of beat beyonce's cuff it in there i can right click store offline and that is now storing the track offline in the offline locker and you have up to a thousand tracks that's great but it hasn't added it to my collection and it hasn't analyzed it so at that point you might also then want to go import to collection so i'm doing that now and i can go back to this playlist up here I can right click and store offline within my main record box collection so that's just the thing you have to get your head around once tracks are in your collection you're working with them your way exactly as you want when they're in the beat source area of the tree there on the left you are a little bit more restricted and any changes well you can't make changes basically whatever changes you want to make can't be made but once you've got them in the collection like this absolutely you can do whatever you want now Something else to point out is that at this point now, any of these beat grids that are saved, any hot cues that I've set on these tracks or anything like that, they have been saved to the computer attached to that metadata. So if I was to close record box, open it up again, then that cue point, that hot cue, or add more of them, whatever you want, and that grid information, all of that has now been saved to the computer. So it's much quicker next time around. So as you can see, if I was to go in and load this bruno mars track over on this deck now it's very quick because the analysis has already happened so i do suggest wherever possible that you actually do things ahead of time and if you've got 
you know some playlists within beat source you want to have and you want to play them in record box in performance mode then you do that ahead of time using the analysis and import to collection kind of feature then the one reason i mean there are many reasons why you might want to have a record box subscription plan the creative or the professional plans because they do offer some really cool features like the dropbox cloud library sync but i will point out at this stage that if you have one of those and you do have cloud library sync enabled then your metadata for your beat source tracks is also synchronized to the cloud so if you have say a desktop at home that you do all your prep with in record box and then you have the cloud library sync enabled so all of your beat source tracks i'm going to add my cue points etc onto here and then i close that down it's going to sync to the cloud and on my performance laptop perhaps i can open up that laptop and again all of these cue points all of these grids all of that metadata will be visible and available on my performance laptop so it does level it up slightly but for most djs i'm guessing who only use one computer for their djing then it's not really an essential but if you are into that cloud thing you have multiple machines then absolutely it's worth looking at using those cloud subscriptions from record box alongside your beat source subscription but as you can see i think record box is a very powerful integration it works very very well indeed you have all these options to work with your tracks once you get them into the main collection there's a lot a lot of power there one final thing to point out, obviously live stem separation is all the rage in the DJ world right now, and Pioneer DJ introduced their own take on it in a recent release of Record Box. And I'm happy to say that track separation, as they call it, works exactly the same with beat source tracks as it does with local files. And that applies to Record Box lighting as well, which relies on analysed beat grids to provide synchronised light shows. So however you use Record Box, beat source should fit into your workflow with ease. So there you go, a breakdown on using BeatSource streaming within Rekordbox from Pioneer DJ. Of course, if things do change in the future regarding the streaming direct play option on the CDJ3000, I will be sure to come back and do a supplementary episode about that. But in the meantime, do let us know in the comments which of our supported platforms you'd like to see me cover on this series next. There are lots to choose from, so let us know your top priorities in those comments. Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Basics. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time. <laughs>